Hello friends, now that you are well aware of the mathematics kit, let us see how these different items may be used to perform the various activities. You are all very well aware of counting numbers. They are also known as natural numbers. You can easily perform addition and subtraction on natural numbers. In this activity, let us extend this addition and subtraction to integers. And what are integers? All the positive and negative numbers along with 0 are called integers. So to represent the activity on integers, I take out this small plastic box containing various items in it. In the box, there is a pack of counters. Observe the counters carefully. See that each counter has a red face and a blue face. Let us assume that the red face is positive and the blue face is negative. Remember this throughout the activity. Let us try addition. Consider any two positive integers, say plus 3 and plus 4. Let us try adding these integers using these colored counters. To represent plus 3, take 3 counters and place them in such a way that the top faces red. 1, 2, 3. These counters represent plus 3. To represent plus 4, take 4 counters and place them in the second row in such a way that the top faces red. 1, 2, 3, 4. Observe that all the faces are of the same color. To add, we just have to count the total number of counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, our sum is 7. But positive or negative? Since all the faces are red in color, our sum is plus 7. Wasn't that easy? You can also try addition of integers in the same manner. Let us try another set of integers. Let us see what happens when we add two negative integers. Say minus 2 and minus 5. To represent minus 2, take two counters and place them in such a way that the top face is blue. 1, 2. These represents minus 2. To represent minus 5, again take 5 counters and place them in the second row such that the top face is blue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Observe the faces of the counters again. They are again easy to add. Why? Since the faces are all of the same color. To add them, we just need to count the total number of counters. Let us add them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So our sum is 7, but positive or negative? Since all these faces are blue in color, our sum is negative 7. Same way as you added the positive integers. Wasn't it interesting? Let us see what happens when we have to add one positive and one negative integer. Let us try to add plus 3 and minus 5. To represent plus 3, Take three counters and place them with the red faces up. One, two, three. And by now I am sure you all know how to represent minus five. Yes, you have to place five counters in the second row with the top faces blue. One, two, three. 4, 5. Observe the faces of the counter carefully. We see that they are counters of different color. Now what do we do? 
there is a trick to it. You all know that one positive and one negative equals to zero. So make pairs of each red face counter with a blue face counter and each pair will represent a zero. One red counter and one blue counter together form a zero. A pair of one red counter and blue counter together again forms a zero. Yet another pair of red counter and blue counter forms a zero. To get the sum, count the remaining number of unmatched counters. One, two. We are left with just two unmatched counters, so the sum is two. But positive or negative? See for yourselves. Since the faces are blue, our sum is minus two. Wasn't addition easy? Now try adding integers of your own choice using these colored counters. And let us extend this activity to subtraction of integers. Let us see what happens when we try to subtract minus 4 from minus 3. To represent minus 3, you know what is to be done. We take three counters and place them in such a way that the top faces are blue in color. 1, 2, 3 and to represent minus 4, I keep 4 counters in the second row such that the top faces are again blue in color. 1, 2, 3, 4. To subtract minus 3 from minus 4, but to subtract, you should remember one thing that subtraction is the inverse of addition. And how do we represent it on a number line? By changing the direction. So here, we invert the faces of the counters kept in the second row. Something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. So we see that the counters in the first row are as it is. And the counters in the second row have inverted faces. We again make pairs of one red and one blue counter to get a zero. One blue faced counter matched with a red faced counter to get a zero. Another blue faced counter matched with a red faced counter to get a zero. The last blue faced counter matched with the red faced counter to yet get another zero. Count the number of unmatched counters left to get your sum. 1. I am left with just one unmatched counter, so my sum is 1. But positive or negative? You all know that since the face is red in color, my sum is plus 1. From integers, let us now move on to whole numbers and decimals. The next activity that I am going to demonstrate will help you to understand the place value system and addition and subtraction of whole numbers and decimals. To perform this activity, take out the wooden stand. Observe that there are five holes drilled on the stand. Then take out the five aluminium rods from the kit box and fix them in the holes drilled on the abacus stand. After fixing the aluminium rods, I see that my abacus is complete. Now let us use this abacus to understand the place value system. Each aluminium rod here depicts a different place value. How? We'll observe carefully. Like this rod depicts the hundreds place. This rod depicts the tens place. This rod depicts the ones place also known as the units place. This rod depicts the tenths place and the last rod depicts the hundredths place. Let us use this stand and try to form a number out of it. The mathematics kit contains a few beads. Take out some beads and put them 
in the aluminium rods and insert a few beads in each rod. Isn't this stand looking colourful? Let us try to read the number that is represented on this abacus stand. Notice that the aluminium rod on the hundredths place has 1, 2, 3, 4 beads in it. So the place value of this rod becomes 4 hundredths and the number it depicts is 4 hundred. The rod at the tenths place has 1, 2, 3 beads in it. So the number it depicts becomes 3 tenths or 30. In the next rod, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 beads in it. So the place value becomes 5 once and the number is 5. The rod at the tenths place has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 beads in it. So the place value becomes 7 tenths and the number it depicts becomes 0.7. The last aluminium rod at the hundredths place has 1, 2 beads in it. Therefore, the place value becomes 2 hundredths and the number it depicts is 0 0.02. So what will be the number in whole now? Let us see for ourselves. The number depicted is 435.72. Wasn't it easy? You can also try representing as many decimal and whole numbers using this stand. There is another interesting fact about this stand. You can add and subtract various whole numbers and decimals using this abacus. Do you want to learn how? You can but you need to just keep one simple rule in your mind that you cannot fill more than nine beads in any of these aluminium rods. Why is that? Let us recall a simple fact that you already know. If you try to fill in the tenth bead on this rod which depicts the hundredths place, remember that 10 hundredths represent 1 tenths. Similarly, 10 tenths represent 1 units. Same way, 10 units represents 1 tenths and lastly, 10 tenths will represent 1 hundredths. So, if this rule is clear, let us try to add another decimal number to this number which is already on the stand. Say let us take 136.35 and add it to the number 435.72. For this you need to take the beads again. Let us arrange the beads of the number to be added. 100 30 Six point three five Now let me try to add this number with the number already on the abacus stand. Just remember one little thing. Always start the addition from the hundredths place. Notice that the rod at the hundredths place already has two beads in it. Let us try putting these beads in the rod. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Notice that now the rod at the hundredths place has 7 beads in it. So what do you infer? That the sum will have the digit 7 at its hundredths place. Now let us start the addition at the next place which is the tenths place. Observe that this aluminium rod already has 7 beads in it. Let us see 
what happens when I try to put in these three beads with them. 8, 9, 10. But remember the simple rule which I had told you earlier that you cannot fill more than 9 beads in any aluminum rod. So what do I do? I just recall that 10 tenths represent 1 unit. So all I have to do is take out these 10 beads from the tenths place and put in 1 bead at the units place. 1, 2, 9, 10. In place of these 10 bits, I put 1 bead in the units place and I keep the 9 beads aside. Observe the rod at the units place will have 6 beads, but the rod at the tenths place will not have any bead. What do we infer from this? That there will be no value at this place. So the digit at the tenths place in the sum will be 0. Let us try to add digits at the units place. Since this rod already has 6 beads in it, let us try to see what happens when we add these 6 beads to it. 7, 8, 9, 10. But I again remember the rule that I cannot put more than 9 beads in any aluminum rod. So what do I do? I repeat the same process. I take out the 10 beads from the units place and just place 1 bead in the tens place. 1, 2, 9, 10. In place of these 10 beads at the units place, I just have to put 1 bead at the tens place. Now the tens place will have 4 beads. And I keep the 9 beads aside. Observe that I still have 2 beads left to be put at the units place. Let us try putting these beads at the units place. 1, 2. The rod at the units place now has 2 beads in it. So what do you infer? That my sum will have the digit 2 at its units place. Can we go on to the next place? Alright, the rod at the tens place already has 4 beads in it. Let us try to put in these 3 beads into the rod. 5, 6, 7. Now, the rod at the tens place has 7 beads in it. This implies that our sum will have the digit 7 at its tens place place. Let us try adding the digits at the hundreds place. This rod already has 4 beads in it. Let us put this one bead inside the rod. 5. Notice that there are 5 beads in the rod at the hundreds place. Now you should have already known that the sum will have the digit 5 at its hundreds place. So what is the number that is represented after addition on this abacus stand? 572.07 So my sum is 572.07 Wasn't the addition easy? You can also try adding different decimal and whole numbers using this abacus. Let us wrap up the episode now. I know you all will be eagerly waiting to see what more activities can be performed using this mathematics kit? But for that, you have to watch the next episode. Bye for now.